So my name's Rhys Cannon. I am a director at uh, Graph Architects, and this is my house, uh, Pitch Black. Um, so uh, this is Pitch Black, and we just moved in before Christmas. Uh, it's a house for me, uh, my wife, and three kids. Um, it's probably 90% uh, complete, with 10% uh, uh, still to do. Um, all the fun little bits, and probably inevitable uh, when the architects designed a house. Um, we're based down in South East London, in, in Broccoli, and it was never the intention to uh, to do a self-build necessarily, but um, the opportunity came along uh, when a builder that we worked for um, had this their builder's yard and asked me to have a look at the opportunity to, for him to build a house uh, as, a, as a pension plan uh, for himself. And when I saw that, saw the plot, it, um, it just looked, too good to kind of miss so we um, uh, put in an offer with him to try and buy it and after a bit of negotiation um, uh, we eventually managed to uh, buy the house uh, buy the plot sorry which did take a good two years um, and so this is um, starting back in 2014 so it's been quite a quite a long journey now the the site as you can see is uh, a builder's was a builder's yard and you can see here it's quite cramped um, lots of uh, containers and sheds uh, on the site and so pretty difficult to kind of envisage a, a house a house here but we're neighboring um, a railway and um, the the outlook was absolutely kind of phenomenal and so here uh, these are a couple of models uh, this is a model that we made for uh, uh, when we made the planning submission and here it gives you a really good impression of the the site context so you can kind of see how this is a plot right on the top um, of a railway um, uh, cutting, so on top of the embankment looking down, and it's behind a, a series of houses, um, and uh, the access is by a, a kind of narrow uh, track uh, to get to the site, which becomes a kind of recurring uh, theme of, of difficulty uh, throughout the build. So I'm not going to bore you with lots of uh, drawings um, of, of the building, but uh, I thought it's uh, good to, to see um, all the plans of uh, the building together. So you can kind of see the unusual triangular shape um, of the plot, but also when you compare the ground floor, first floor and basement, because it's a three-story uh, building, you can see they're all different and there was no real continuity um, between each of, uh, each of the, the floor plates, um, which was, wasn't intentional, but it was just the way that we found that we could occupy uh, the site best. But, Without that continuity, it did uh, make uh, building the house uh, that much more uh, difficult. And you can see on the ground floor, the, the um, throat of the uh, access uh, um, uh, down the track. And there is a turntable and a car there. And so one of the issues that we wanted to have, uh, be able to have off street parking uh, here because of the, of the road being quite um, full up with parking currently, um, and without wanting to lose lots of the sites to um, uh, a turning um, a turning for the car, we actually decided to uh, use a turntable to get around that problem. And so equally, on the on, you can see here, it is a four bedroom house. So one kind of master suite and then three single bedrooms uh, for the kids who are up on the first floor. So here are some um, concept sketches um, uh, that, were, that I've done. They're kind of slightly post rationalized, but they explain the sort of the idea and theory behind uh, the house. So we, the volume of the first floor, we decide to uh, incline away from the neighbor's uh, garden. So it butts, it up, butts up on two sides uh, with respect to neighbors. And uh, we wanted to, to lessen the impact uh, somewhat on, on overshadowing of those gardens. So we actually incline the whole building and uh, towards uh, the railway edge as well. Uh, and then on uh, also because of the proximity of, of all the um, neighbors' houses, uh, we decided to have no windows facing uh, those properties on, on two of the elevations. And so we staggered and fragmented the facades in order that we could actually have uh, light penetrating through uh, slot windows um, and to slightly lessen the, the bulk and the mass of the first floor block. So here you can see um, the fragmented uh, sketch of the ground floor plan, where there's kind of no right right angles on on um, the kind of corner points uh, where the window uh, where the walls uh, meet, and then also the kind of theory of the 
of the um, hatching, the sort of the linear fragmentation of the uh, the three different volumes. Um, this is a, a sort of tricky junction, uh, which I'll come up again in a bit more detail later. But because of um, trying to fit in the geometry on such a sort of tight urban site and with uh, with objects such as the turntable to accommodate, it did mean that actually we did get a few kind of difficult um, uh, corners, which um, were tricky to resolve, but actually became sort of uh, probably the most uh, fun bits to look into in more detail. So this is an image uh, during the build. So this is once the um, all the piling um, has gone in, and we're now starting to excavate the basement. But it's a really good shot to show a few things. Is one is the sort of proximity of this really tight kind of urban site to um, the terrace uh, of, of houses uh, behind, and um, and sort of the the concerns of the potential overlooking issues that, that uh, might arise. But also, the, you can see the narrowness of the of the access track, and that's all the materials that had to be fed up and down um, this track. And there's no ability to crane in um, uh, any materials either because of all the um, overhead uh, cables and lines which are in the main road. So from this viewpoint, I think this is um, an image taken from when I stood on top of the um, um, site hut at the time. And um, to the left uh, is the drop off down to, to the railway. So in this image, I just wanted to show um, uh, show you the, the kind of extra sort of complexities that we sort of engaged in in, in building uh, the house. So the basement is uh, concrete uh, construction with uh, contiguous um, piles around the perimeter, um, capping beam, sprayed uh, uh, concrete liner. Then the ground ground floor is kind of fairly traditional standard cavity wall. Um, construction masonry, all load bearing, and then up at first floor, it was uh, a steel frame um, to deal with the kind of um, uh, tricky geometry, the, all the different angles, and with a um, timber infill. And so it kind of gave us lots of headaches because we had lots of different um, uh, methodologies that we had to kind of find details to resolve uh, continually, and combined with the, the slightly awkward uh, geometry of the building it meant that the um, um, creating an airtight envelope was was particularly difficult uh, but we achieved it and we did we did a good job so this is a time lapse um, uh, of the the of the build obviously after we've got out the ground and we're now kind of building the ground and uh, first floor here and um, this is kind of quite good to, again to show sort of how tight we are to the, the respective boundaries and this is sort of something that comes about by sort of building in a tight urban site. The tree line beyond is the top of the, the railway line um, and there are a couple of large um, trees that we actually had to fell as part of the process um, and not only felling those trees but also the build itself required us to have lots of negotiations and discussions with network rail and which uh, both take time and cost uh, quite a bit of money uh, in order to get agreement from them that you can go ahead with the works and when they're kind of confident that there's no danger that you're ever going to do anything which is going to um, endanger the railway line or stop trains uh, uh, running. So as part of the, of the build is that we had um, we invested lots of time and in design energy into lots and lots of different details and um, one of these was um, is the kind of the, the blue legs uh, that support the building, the overhang of the building around the kind of carport uh, area. And for this, we need we knew that we needed to make sure that they look good and that they were kind of going to be a really important sort of feature, if you like, of the building. And so we actually decided to engage um, an art fabricator um, called Art Fabs um, up north who we'd used previously um, on an art installation on the Lincolnshire coast with a wind tower. We knew that they would be able to handle the kind of the difficult, uh, difficult and uh, different angles that were going on, make sure it's welded really neatly and get a fantastic um, uh, paint finish too. They were kind of insistent on um, actually doing it all in one piece, um, and uh, which was fine, but um, it did require the kind of road to be um, closed for quite a few few uh, hours in order to um, very, very skillfully and carefully manage to uh, manipulate that up the track to get it into uh, position. Um, it's something where I think as, a, as an architect and a sort of 
you wouldn't normally necessarily worry about those sorts of things but in a self-build context is that you're aware that you're uh, potentially upsetting your future neighbours and so you have to be really mindful about um, uh, the impact of, of the, the build and the construction on your kind of uh, immediate surroundings. So during the build we had uh, we had lots of other aspects that we really wanted to craft and make and I think that when you're um, building your own houses that that's where you know the opportunities arise to actually really take your time and think about um, uh, details and really enjoy them and uh, this is uh, round again around um, the car turntable and at the base of the steel columns we need to encase them in concrete um, in, uh, to guard against vehicle impact on the structure and this is we employed uh, a couple of graduates uh, who who i had actually taught some uh, years ago and uh, we made up the uh, designed all the formwork and um, uh, and the, the details of this area ourselves and did this all kind of in-house as a bit of a um, an experiment and um, to see to see what we what we can achieve um, here you can see the formwork in situ around the base of the columns and um, kind of uh, fabricated uh, uh, plywood uh, lots of the guys on site were kind of quite bemused sort of seeing us rolling up our sleeves and and uh, getting stuck in and, and doing all this um, uh, ourselves uh, but it gave a kind of an extra layer to the building which um, I think you sometimes don't uh, uh, aren't able to achieve um, on a normal normal project a normal client so here you can see the kind of bespoke uh, detail so this isn't quite finished but this is um, on the opposite side of the turntable and this is actually um, one of the from one of the sketches that you saw earlier and this is actually a, a gully um, for the downpipe above and the water disappears through here and re-emerges uh, somewhere else kind of through a hidden uh, a duct in the um, in the concrete and um, there's a mixture of precast elements on top and uh, in situ con concrete below and the uh, former and the the actual uh, grill the brass grill that drops into this gully again we're all actually manufactured by ourselves so within the office we have our own in-house cnc so we're able to mill both the formwork and also the brass um, and it, again it was kind of somewhere where we could really um, actually experiment and have fun um, with with uh, elements which would probably take too much time or cost too much on on, on any normal uh, project but when you're building for yourself this is kind of what you live for and what you want to do and so you uh, you take that time and, and you suck up that expense uh, in order to achieve these things so here you can see um, uh, from uh, this is in the process of actually making these components was uh, in order to uh, 3D scan um, some of the uh, of the of the approach uh, of the steel legs in situ and to actually work out where everything was that if, um, after it actually been made on site because some of these elements had to be quite precisely uh, positioned. So uh, this kind of video sort of shows you is is a fly through of um, the the, um, the the 3D scan and the point cloud and moving through into the um, the underside um, of the carport, the overhang, uh, looking at the kind of respective uh, concrete areas. So um, even when making these things, um, sometimes you have to accept that you'll make mistakes because you know we're doing it ourselves and things aren't always going to go perfectly and we don't have the recourse to go back to a contractor or subcontractor to actually um, ask them to redo it or condemn the work necessarily so this is actually again is an extract from the um, from the 3d scan and this uh, actually shows um, a scan through the precast element on the top and the in-situ element below and the gully that we formed in that corner and you can see here the misalignment and um, it's kind of a mistake which comes up and it's fine and there are lots of little other ones that kind of arose on them uh, forming up that concrete but we're quite happy to keep those and um, and maintain those within the final um, final design and not necessarily look to redo them because we want to celebrate those things because to us they represent um, the process and it reminds us of the kind of incredibly exciting uh, time in, in, in making the build so 
although we haven't had time to do professional photographs yet because we have have only just moved in and as i said it's not it's not quite there yet we're almost there but i did, have, was able to take a, uh, some photos in the last couple of months to give you a sense of um what it's like inside so these two images here are of the uh, master uh, ensuite up on the first floor kind of, uh, overlooking the greenery uh, beyond uh, a couple of images of the sort of final product of the um, um, steel legs uh, supporting um, uh, the overhang and kind of a nice crisp um, uh, uh, welding on the, on the various joints and sort of persuaded by uh, the fabricators to go for this little dip into the concrete. So where the legs meet that is a kind of really nice little shallow, uh, shallow dip you see. Uh, details of the internal um, uh, handles and the doors uh, upstairs and the uh, joinery finishes. So again, we you'll see in uh, another photo that we try to celebrate the the, the different angles and the different um, geometry that happened on the various levels. So a kind of recurring theme on ground level is this kind of capsule type shape, uh, which uh, and in particular the uh, central image which shows uh, a brass um, a bespoke handrail, which again, we fabricated ourselves. Um, and this is uh, for a pool for uh, sliding one of the sliding doors down to the basement. Um, this, uh, the shape of this actually is, is taken directly. It's a kind of one to a hundred version of um, the plan of the, um, uh, of the landscape. So that, you know, the large circle is actually the turning circle. Uh, the two small ones at the top are, uh, are the shapes within the landscape and that kind of continues as a little kind of brass thread, a brass line which weaves its way around the house. Uh, so here is an image of the, uh, the stair stairwell and uh, looking and the balustrade looking downwards and again you can see here how we've tried to um, make a point of the, of the different angles that occur throughout the house. So, and, and all the, um, our, we, our um, main contractor is actually fabulous and uh, all the joinery is actually done um, um, uh, in situ by their in-house teams, a really fantastic job. So this is actually uh, an image of um, the, the basement. Um, so it probably had we, well, though the basement is an incredibly costly element, um, we had to pile anyway in order uh, to get down, uh, to take the, um, the bearing of the house down below the level of the, the railway uh, um, cutting. So we realised we had to pile, so we thought we may as well um, uh, create a basement. And um, the, But had we not done this, I think it wouldn't have been um, feasible as a family home. So the, the cost and expense was absolutely um, well worth it. And um, although this looks incredibly sort of tidy at this point in time, is that um, I'm actually sat right now tucked behind the curtain on the left and uh, it, it's certainly a kind of much <laughs> a messier environment uh, than it kind of is portrayed here on these photos. And so this is a picture of the, the staircase again, um, but from ground level um, with where we have, you get all these glimpses and sn snippets of different details that kind of um, cut through the house at all different points. And so although um, the house is very purposely kind of turning its back on the um, terrace of, of, of houses, along the main road and actively focusing towards um, uh, the railway. We just wanted to make sure that there's always these small glimpses of light and shafts of light that, um, that you uh, always get at every point of uh, walking around the house. Uh, so here's, and here's a, uh, an image of the kitchen. There's also an image here of uh, the turntable in action. We always get asked uh, about that and whether it's the gimmick or not. Um, but it certainly isn't, and it's probably something that we use almost every day. Um, and again, if it wasn't for that, we would um, struggle in, as, as a family to be able to use the house kind of um, as well as we do. So, um, as I said, we're not quite finished. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but um, we have been able to sort of enjoy this sort of period of lockdown to actually um, experience the house um, um, in all sorts of ways and to sort of really test it to find out all the positives and negatives of it and we, we I don't think there are any negatives as yet we're just we're, we're um, over the moon with how well it accommodates all our different uh, needs um, 
there's bits and bobs which we're using the opportunity to finish so here you can see the landscaping isn't quite done and we're trying to get that uh, um, uh, finished off and using our kind of weekends and evenings through the, through this period uh, to get stuck in into that but um, we certainly um, uh, are very very grateful and thankful to the, the kind of the opportunity that we've had in order to um, uh, build a house in um, uh, such a location and uh, as this and so um, uh, we're looking forward to many years to come thank you